Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. Now I've got something special in line for you today. But in order to start this video, we must start this tale at the beginning. Back to three months ago, where I was nervously plucking up the courage to press upload. I'd never done anything like this before, but I thought why not? Maybe someone will watch it. Fast forward three months, 80,000 people watched this video. The end product is good, but the sound is terrible, it was recorded on a terrible headset mic, and in the first three minutes of the video, there's one glaring error. You can imagine what the comment section looks like. It's pretty cool, it's got some nice little details on it, I like the panels. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it's from, maybe it's a G.I. Joe or something, maybe it's a G.I. Joe or something, maybe it's a G.I. Joe or... G.I. Joe. <laughs> So in order to redress the balance, I decided to make a truly epic Star Wars diorama. To begin, I started with a piece of polystyrene and just started mapping out some basic tree shapes. Um, I changed this in the end, but it gives me a basic idea of where things might end up. I decided to add in a small path and some variation in height. Next I used a Bunsen burner, now I would suggest to use something a little smaller for this but a small blowtorch or a lighter would be better but it's what I had to hand. And just gently melt away some of the polystyrene and this gives you a nice smooth undulation. Um, it's important to do this in a well vented area as the fumes are a little toxic, definitely open a window but the result works quite nicely. Then I come in with some PVA and just some offcuts of polystyrene and start to raise the height of the base. I'm not worrying too much about exact shapes here, just beginning to get a sense. And then I come in with my hot wire cutter to just take off some of the edges. Again, not worrying about detail at this stage, just getting basic shapes. Next we take some dash stone air drying clay, this is actually horrible stuff, I don't like it at all, but for what we need it for is fantastic, it's, uh, you can just use small pieces of it um, and begin to piece it straight over the polystyrene. And once I've covered everything I'll just leave that to dry overnight. And I take a piece of MDF to use as a base and glue this to the underside of the polystyrene with some PVA glue. Taking care to clean up any messes. Next, I'll take some white gesso primer and give everything a good solid prime. Then I take some wood filler and uh, just apply this to the edges. Again, you don't need to be too neat. You can always sand this back and apply it in several coats. Get a nice smooth finish. Then I take some PVA, in this case some Wix's industrial grade Take some wonderful dried garden soil of a very fine variety. This just increases the texture and adds some small particles within the mix. And I take some structure gel that I had lying around. This is just an acrylic base, but um, similar to what you might find in a heavy body acrylic. And begin to add some paints, some raw sienna. some burnt sienna and just a little black and I really mix all this wonderfully horrible mixture together I felt it was a little brown at this stage so I had a little green now the paints that I'm using are golden liquid acrylics they're highly pigmented 
great for working, don't need a lot of paint, colour goes a long way. And then I begin to paint all this over the whole base of the diorama. I leave this to dry overnight and then give the edges a good sand in the morning. Next I've got some old roots from one of my many foraging trips. It's always good to collect bits and pieces. And then I've got some sawdust and some small stones and some slightly larger stones. I'm going to make a really nice concoction out of this. So then I'll just take a, some hot glue, stick this onto the base of the diorama, and I wanted to try and create one of those overset tree roots with a nice hollow underneath. Then I'll combine all the little ingredients and then mix this all together. take some finer tree roots. These are fantastic and I keep a good stash of these for all manner of applications. And just carefully take my time, put these on one by one and slowly build up what could be some ancient tree structures. And I take some old bits of bark and small stones and just hot glue these to the base as well. And I take some of that mixture that I made up and begin to apply this all over the roots and the trees and the stones around the bases so it all blends into one. Now I've never made any trees before, but I watched a few tutorials online. Um, if you don't know who Luke Towen is, then I definitely recommend that you check him out. He's somewhat of a guru for making all manner of wonderful things. So I loosely followed most of his ideas, but in practice I also found some things that, you know, would work more specifically to the job that I'm trying to do. Now to begin with, I take some balsa wood dowels and um, a craft knife. Um, I chose to use a more sturdy, lockable craft knife rather than a thin snap blade. Use whatever you're comfortable with, but in this case I wanted a nice solid blade as to which to work off. And then I begin whittling down some tree trunks. Working with balsa wood in this case is really easy as it carves so easily. And just take your time, be patient. And I have to say, this was actually somewhat relaxing. This also can work to make a nice Harry Potter wand if you would like. Next I take a power drill with a fine bit and begin to drill some diagonal holes in the trunk. I do these at a slight upward angle um, and then I'll insert some wires into these. Now this takes a little while but just as with anything, every hole there's one less hole to drill. Then I take some 
flexible garden wire. It's important that this is strong enough to hold its shape, but still flexible enough to easily maneuver around. And I slowly cut these into branches. And you will need a lot of these, so just cut loads. Then just with a little dot of super glue, I dip the end of each branch in and carefully insert it into the pre-drilled hole. Now again, this is quite a laborious process, but it kind of goes quicker than you expect it to really. And if you look from above, you can see if your branches are relatively even if, or if there are any glaring gaps. You can easily just move some branches to fill any of the more obvious gaps. And then just with some side cutters, I give this tree a good haircut. And slowly it begins to take on the shape of a believable pine tree. Then I drill a small hole in the base and take a pin with just a dab of super glue. And I use this just to support things while I'm working on the trees. Now here was one experiment I tried uh, some crackle paint and I got this online somewhere off Amazon I think now I think the idea was a really good idea but I think this crackle paint maybe is, is a bit iffy it looks good here but in person I definitely think it could be a lot better but nonetheless I still think it looks pretty good then I take my airbrush and come in with some brown and some black and just begin to build up some tones and various colors on the tree trunks. And then I take a bigger drill bit and carefully drill out the central core of one of the trees that I've made. And the reason for this will be revealed shortly. And here's a cool little idea that I came up with, um, just taking an old hog hair brush. These are pretty cheap and you can pick these up in any art supply store. And I cut these into fine pieces to make approximately six millimeter sort of straw like grass. And then with some spray adhesive, taking care not to get too much glue on the trunk, coat the branches and then slowly sprinkle some of my homemade straw texture onto the branches. And this takes a while at first, but be patient, build up subsequent layers and slowly more and more begins to stick to each other and it looks looks great I'll be honest I was really surprised at how how, how good this looks and I take some two mil static grass and apply the same procedure again and this begins to flesh out the branches much more with good quality leaves and got some static grass on the trunk here but not to worry you can easily remove that and paint over it. Now don't worry about the colour too much at this stage we can always alter that later on down the line. Then I take some one millimetre static grass and just 
just give it a good sprinkle from above. Now this is really a balancing act, you know, between getting too much grass on and, and having the branches still look believable and sparse. Then with a quick airbrush, I darken the colour, give it a sort of richer green and come in with some brown underneath to signify some dead pine needles and then just give the tree trunk a good nice easy dry brush just pick out some of that texture and then carefully with a pre-drilled hole and a dab of glue I fix these onto the base I did actually replace these with a sturdier nail as, as I felt the trees were a little bit flimsy and just wanted a little bit more support but again it just shows how versatile this way of working is and then just with the same mixture that we had before just blend everything together make everything look nice and here's a nice little tip that I adapted to my own needs um, this is just some hanging basket liner you can pick this up from your local garden center pretty cheap and you get loads of it and is this wonderfully tangled reasonably coarse texture but for me I thought if I cut this into small pieces it makes perfect little pine needles so with a few of these chopped up and the uh, mixture still nice and wet I just sprinkle some of these over where we might find some discarded pine needles. Then just with a fine pin vise, just poke in a couple of holes and then just take some fine little roots from before with a little dot of PVA and just pop these in at the very base of where the branches come out of the main trunk and these just again sell that illusion of branches that have died and then I begin adding some vegetation now these are some plastic uh, aquarium plants I think or from a topiary ball I can't remember and painted up these look great I had these left over from my ruined temple diorama build if you haven't seen that video then I'll leave a link for you here and attaching them with little pins works great into the polystyrene and you don't even really need glue I'll be honest and I've made up a load of these little ferns cut up out of other plastic ferns and then painted up and then just pieced together with some hot glue and I've just built these on the top of a pinhead And then now this is a fantastic little discovery I made. This is a product called Horsehair. Um, and I think it's just glued together with little bits of latex. Um, so I sprayed some of this brown and sprinkled on some of this foliage, some darker and some lighter shades. And it makes this fantastic little bramble. And so I started to interlace this in amongst all the plastic plants. And this really begins to look like some undergrowth that you might find in the forest. Then I took some oregano and dyed this brown with some brown ink. And with some PVA, I began to populate the forest floor with, with a mixture of dead pine needles and some other bits of leaf matter. And then I pull off some foliage, it's medium green, this is from Woodland Scenics. And again, this just makes wonderful little bits of undergrowth. And I picked up a couple of Star Wars Legion figures uh, from Element Games. These came and they're pretty cool, I was quite surprised. Um, the level of detail is, is pretty nice. So I began to clean these up and slowly piece these together now the scene that I was trying to recreate um, the famous speeder scene from the Battle of Endor 
Luke Skywalker's wearing a slightly different outfit. Um, he's got a poncho, so a green stuffed one together. And it's not the best, but you know, for this purpose, I think it will do. After a quick prime, Luke had to prove his worth. And also cut off the head of one of the stormtroopers and reposed him so he was in a bit more of an agile position. And then just begin painting. Just uh, using some thin down Vallejo paints here. Begin painting in Luke's trousers and legs. And I give the lightsaber a good undercoat of a nice heavy body white. Then I mix up a slightly tan sandy colour, a little bit of grey in there, and begin painting in Luke's poncho. And then you think, might think, well, what are you doing? But I like to paint skin tones and faces with uh, a darker coat underneath, and then slowly just begin picking out some of the forms in the cloak, just with a lighter colour. In drawing in some of that camouflage and this is why I like to do the faces with a darker base tone is because then you can just easily come in just with a very fine bit of paint on your brush and just painting the facial features more like you would like be painting a portrait and immediately even without a wash you begin to create a much more lifelike feel. And then I just pick in some highlights. Again, thinking about where the light might strike the fabric of the cloth. just picking out some of the more pronounced facial features just adding a little yellow to the mix and I give the stormtrooper a good blast of white and paint in the speeder the nice dark muted brown darker gunmetal type colour, just a little bit of gunmetal and just a hint of black. And just paint this over all the metal surfaces. And then I come in with some more sandy colour, paint in the pouch on the back. And here I wanted to recreate how when Luke Skywalker cuts the speeder in half, how he hit, hits a tree. So I took out the Dremel and started piecing apart this land speeder. Also took apart the Stormtrooper, cut him into pieces so I could repose him. Full impact could be felt. <laughs> then I just came in with some black and started to touch in and paint in all the little details on our friendly stormtrooper. Next I spent the evening cutting apart Christmas lights and soldering them back together and trying to figure out how they would all work. 
and somehow I made it function how I need it to and then drilled a good hole in the base of the diorama so I could thread the LEDs through the base and then wrap these carefully and tightly around the stormtrooper. Now I kept him separate so I could still work on him and this was a little bit fiddly but then I took some fiber optic strands from a, one of those strange lights that you see, cut these down and hot glued these onto some of the exposed LEDs. And I try to keep this in a kind of radial shape so it looks like a real explosion. And I came in with some cotton balls and began to glue these onto the stormtrooper. Now I'm doing this a little bit larger than I need to so it gives me room to work backwards and take away. And by reducing this then it gives me a uh, can really tailor how big or violent the explosion is. Just take your time with this. And then I just come in with some yellow and just give it a light mist. After this, just come in with some orange, slightly more towards the edges. And it's important when doing a, any sort of bright source of light to, it's only as bright as the dark colors around it. So then I came in with a, a transparent oxide. This is a deep red oxide and just by layering it on with the orange, it really makes a darker color around, in turn making the bright white central core seem much brighter. And I further enhance this just by just licking the very edges just with a little bit of black. It's already starting to look like a bit of an explosion. And now because I'm a sucker for more punishment, I made loads more ferns and painted each one by hand. And these I slowly applied, carefully, and just added these to the mix of forest that we've got going on here. And I preserved some moss, actually. And this is a, another experiment that I tried with some glycerine. Um, that will be for a future video, I think. And again, just started to interlace these around the forest floor. After adding a few more little details and some finishing touches, that about wrapped it up. Now this project started with just a small idea, but as it continued, my ambition grew and grew and grew. And and it made me take on things that I'd never attempted before. Sure, there are things I would change, but all the little experiments have taught me so much. And I guess that's what's most important. And if you've liked what you've seen and maybe learned something, then of course, feel free to subscribe. Hit the like button, it really supports the channel. And of course, get involved in the comments below. I always love hearing your feedback. Thank you for coming on this journey with me, and may the force be with you. Thank you.